Good morning, buongiorno from Italy, buongiorno from La Cucina Italiana. Hi everybody, I'm Maddalena Fossati, I'm the editor-in-chief of La Cucina Italiana. I show you the cover, by any chance I have it here. Welcome, welcome to this. Uh, we're going to cook some pasta together with butta la pasta with an amazing chef named the Toscan Gun. Maybe you know him already, he's a, a great guy, he's from Florence but it's based in the United States since a while, I think 20 years And it's a Tosc from Toscany, of course. That's why it's in his nickname. Uh, Gabriele, Gabriele is coming. Here we go. Hi, Gabriele. How Ciao a tutti. You? Hello, everybody. Ow. <laughs> what did you do? Oh, no, I'm just, I'm, no, I'm just banging stuff around. No, it's funny because I framed my, my phone uh, on my single, and now that you're in, I just want to make sure that I probably have to angle a little bit just to make sure that you can see the, the counter. How are you guys? Oh, How's it going? Yeah, well, you know, I'm in Italy, and uh, you are in New York City, I guess. In Brooklyn or in uh, Manhattan? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Brooklyn, okay. Yeah. And uh, how's the weather? Uh, it's, it's a wonderful spring day, one of those days that you just want to be out with your heart and soul and go see the squirrels in the park, but you just can't. So... I'm just cooking like every day. I've been up since five, <laughs> making my bread. It's just crazy. It's it's really crazy here, but it's good. You know, yeah. the, the good thing is that to a degree, I am uh, I am at peace in the kitchen. Uh, my mission, food wise, is always to take care of my family. My family is stuck here with me, so it has been really a mission. And if anything, I have uh, I have gone a little back to my origins. You know, in the very beginning when quarantine hit, we started a little earlier because my family is in Italy. So yeah. I was talking Where to my mom they, and my brother. Are they in Tuscany? Has you in Florence? In Florence. Yeah, everybody's good. Sorry, I didn't ask. You're good. Your boy. How's yeah, your boy yeah, doing? No His worries. leg is okay. Everybody's fine. Yeah. Right on. Okay. <laughs> Thank uh, you for so, asking. You know, we we were following the news, uh, and I pulled down my kids out of school five days before we actually had an announcement here in the city, and they were like, "What do you mean?" I'm like. I don't believe that if all this is going around the world, New York doesn't have it. It's just impossible. New York is, you know, the hub, one of the hubs of the world. And in fact, you know, we're, we're going through it. It's, uh, you know, the, the numbers of people that died in New York City almost equals the number of people that died in Italy. I know. So, it's and so that's one bad. city. So I'm a, I'm a big proponent that we need to leave the cities. We need to go back to the country. We need to... To slow in, down in a, a little bit. In a new way, you know, yeah. in a new way. I, I am not calling, you know, this is not a call to action to go back in time and become farmers and go back to the analog. Uh, but Calls coming over and sometimes I'm interrupted. Okay. Oh, it's fine. No, I, but you know. I can talk in the mirror like I, I, I won't stop. Don't worry. <laughs> no, you know, I talk with myself in the, in, with the phone since a while. So I'm used to, I understand. Uh, a lot of people say hi to you. Uh, I see Hi, Carole, everybody. I see Elizabeth, I see Andrea. Uh, Very thank good. you for following us. Actually, we are going to cook an amazing pasta with Gabriele. Yes, let, let's start cooking and then we can talk during the process. At least sure. I, you know. Let's go. Otherwise, what do you I just have talk. there? Show us. All right, so mm. one of the things that happened, I'm going to uh, get this a little closer to the stove. One of the <laughs> things that happens during quarantine is that uh, one of the easy mistakes to do is to overshop. You want to limit the amount of times that you go to the market. But now that the farmer's market are coming out, we have been out for a couple of walks and we come back with too many vegetables. They get piled up in the fridge and little by little, unless you're you know, a sheep, like you cannot really devour all that fiber at the same time. So certain things have to be kind of like recycled in soups or frittatas and in this case, pasta. So I have done, I have done some, some pre-work. So we're using, this is that, we, we call it a Toscan kale because it is a Toscan kale. Uh, it, this is more like the California version, meaning that it's okay. harvested when the leaves are nice and tender and small. Toscan kale, sometimes, uh, if you find it in the field, it gets all the way up to your waist. Um, but the is taste about, is very similar, right? Yeah, the consistency. And one of the things that I do like uh, is that this is a little softer. You know, they okay. say that in Italy, you only can eat cavolonero after the first frost uh, hit the leaves uh, because it kind of like really changes the texture of it. So nobody harvests it. And, and that's our ingredient to taste the new olive oil in November and so on and so forth. So basically I am doing, do you mind my shoulders if I do this and that? No, okay, no, I have no. To, uh, okay, because, so. Uh, yeah, if you, if you need to cook, I understand that you, you know, okay. What All right, is this? so 
This is a, this is guanciale. Guanciale is a cured okay. pizza. No, because we don't see. Hold on. Show sure again. Yeah, I'm gonna incline. Uh, I'm gonna incline the phone and, and stay okay. a little down. No, I'll I know it's hard I... by yourself. I know it's hard, but you're doing good. No problem. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's that's what I do, girl. Like, I I do it all the time. I tell people like we we are starting doing this. We started doing these videos with my wife. We go live a couple of times a week. So, like my setup is so. I, there you go. Look at that. Okay, so this no, is one chart. Okay. You know the thing about guanciale. I'll show you the, the piece. The guanciale that you find here in the United States is very different from the one that you find in Italy. Uh, I, I don't think it's a matter of ingredient. I think it's a matter of culture and the, the process and the way that it's dried up. Yeah, so the guanciale was... that you find in the, it, it tends to be a little wetter. It is not mm -hmm. pulled, it is not cured as long as we do it in Italy. So I kind of like limit my use, but for an amatriciana, for a base, for a sauce like this, it has the little punch to it that is really nice. Okay, so because uh, Gabriele, finish. what are you cooking today as a pasta? What is the, okay. the idea? Well, I, I, uh, I am making some gemelli. Okay. Well, I, I have gemelli. two cuts. I'll let you choose. It's either gemelli or conchiglia, or we can let the people choose. The, the cooking time is the same. I would go for gemelli, but gemelli means twins in Italian. I don't yes. know. Let's let somebody want to say his, his or her opinion. We are open for that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. we're open to suggestion. The water is almost boiling. But basically, this pasta is uh, is really easy because one of the things that I try to tell people is that do not be afraid to convert what we usually consider heritage recipes to things that you kind of like need to stick by it because they're historical. That is the the the. That is kind of like the map, roadmap to, to find your way in the kitchen. Guanciale yeah. is a fantastic ingredient. Uh, garlic is ubiquitous. Uh, the herbs that you can use uh, in a recipe like this, it's kale, it's baby kale, uh, it's your old rucola. You can make a mix of these kind of herbs. Uh, this is really a combination of flavors. Uh, uh, I'll finish it with some Parmigiano or Pecorino. So it's really like one of those uh, basic recycle everything, but with a good wine or with good company or with your, you know, why? Or everything all together. Or everything. Okay. This is Somebody an elevated says, place. Uh, Gemelli mix uh, some of the two. And uh, someone, else, sorry, I didn't see your names. Uh, the mostly said Gemelli, but they uh -huh. said that we don't mix pasta. Actually, we do sometimes, we do mix pasta when we are running out of one. Oh, you know, absolutely. You have a small I mean, well, amount. We do, right? If the cooking time, if the cooking time is the same, yes. I wasn't talking about mixing the pasta. I was talking about mixing the herbs. No, but somebody suggests to mix eventually. Oh, but mm, you see, you know, one of my suggestions about the the, the choice of, of your pasta is the cut in relationship to the sauce. Yes. Do you have a meaty sauce? Do you have something that you want to be scooped up? Then use something like conchiglia. Are you making pesto, which is a sauce that really has to cover every inch of the pasta, but you don't want a lump of pesto in your mouth because it's raw, it carries garlic, it has a lot of flavor. Then use a uh, linguine, fettuccine, spaghetti, uh, or even those gemelli because they're kind of like twisted and they work well. So that's kind of like a fun exercise to do as well. Yeah, and, uh, and I think we should not be shy in doing it. I'm 100% Italian, we never mix pasta. No, all right, but what we said that in this time that, you know, it's, time, it's hard and maybe you have a little amount of one pasta and another one, maybe you can do. Of course, it's better not, but, you know, we're open. No, as a, general rule, as a general moment, rule, so, you know, I don't do that. I don't uh, do that. I can, get my, I can get my glove out now. Yeah, you don't need now, now I can angle the camera a little better so you can see. Hold on. I want you to be able to see the stove a little bit, even if I have to squat. I want to be able for Hi, you to Maria see. Victoria. I see some friends over here. Oh, okay. Oh, ah, ah, this perfect, is perfect, You're Martin right? Scorsese, basically. But, right. Well, now, now I have to kind of like do a man spread and stay down so I can stay, I can be in <laughs> You have to get me to yeah. exercise. I don't want to know about your knees afterwards. <laughs> what and what? Your knees. <laughs> oh, no, this. it's fine. I already went running today, so I'm warm. It's fine. It's okay. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the, the Cavalonero just for a moment. Because yeah. if you were to use, uh, let's say, rucola or other ingredients, uh, you don't have to blanch them. Cavalonero carries a lot of texture. Cavalonero yeah. is uh, really, really crunchy. So if you are an herbivore, and this is something that I can do, uh, Chop it fine, and you can put it in the pasta raw. What mm -hmm. I did, uh, I removed the stem because this is really, really hard. Yeah. This is really like a whip. 
and this doesn't cook. So if you make a ribollita, yes, you can keep it in, but in general, this goes away. This is really hard. So you, yeah, you don't want to eat that. It's hard, definitely. I chopped it fine. I boiled it, I blanched it for two minutes in the same water that I'll be cooking the pasta. So at least I recycled energy and water and so on and so forth. I squeezed it dry. Yeah. And then I open it again with my hands. You know, when you go sometimes and you go buy your steamed vegetables, they're clumped into a bowl. And then you cannot really find the texture and the volume when you try to break it down. So after you blanch a vegetable and you squeeze it, break it down again. You want to have some volume. You want to be able to see the texture of, a, yeah. of your vegetable. Okay. So this is it. Can you use this stock later to, you, to make soup stock? Yes, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, well, you know, this, uh, oh, the stock, absolutely. Yeah. All the bottoms of my celery, my carrots, my onion, everything usually ends up into a vegetable broth. The only problem that I'm having right now is that my freezer is overstocked. So because my freezer is overstocked, I do not have the room where to keep the broth because usually that's where I keep it. Usually I have, uh, you know, I don't make fish broth, but I do have my, you know, at least my chicken and my vegetable broth always there. Okay. All right, so what we want to do is... Uh, okay, add, do, do you, add the, you put garlic, olive oil? Not yet. If Not you put yet, the garlic, just, a, if, just guanciale, right? Just okay. a guanciale. If okay. you put the garlic with the guanciale, the garlic will, will burn too fast. So you okay. want to render and pull this guanciale. Really good. One of the things that kind of like drive me crazy about, Amer you know, eating Italian food in America often is the <laughs> fact that there is the perfect degree of burnt and well cooked that you want to give to those cured meats that you put in your sauces. So pancetta and guanciale have to be nice and crispy. They'll soften up back into the sauce eventually. Sure. But you, don't, you do not want to eat an undercooked guanciale or an undercooked pancetta. To me, it's personally offensive, but you know, it's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> personal. I, I learned to deal. I've been here for 20 years, so it's okay. To, yeah, you told me about, over the phone that you were living before in uh, West Coast, in Los Angeles. Yes. And now you're living, yeah. you've been living in New York since 10 years, right? Yes. I met my wife uh, in the hot summer of 2001 uh, in a square in Florence. Uh, she was the, you know, the American on vacation. I was a young Italian guy. <laughs> and, Typical thing. Yeah. Uh, um, I was lucky because you know how those kind of stories go. Like, you know, well, it's summer, we're all happy, she's a tourist, then she goes home. I just chased her. I went to LA and I never looked back. Um, we met Where your wife was living when you, when you met her? Uh, she was there visiting a friend. Okay, but she was living in New York already? Or in no, she was, she was living in LA. She okay. was under contract uh, on a TV show in LA and she had to go back to film. And she told me, if you want to be with me, you have yeah. to come to LA, what do you say? And I'm like, all right, I'm coming. Okay, great. And, and left. And some time passed over actually. But there yes. are, I can get good, um, what else I can use if I don't get any good guanciale? Because I can't get good or even usable guanciale here in Jersey. What should I? replace with? I know, the, the guanciale, the guanciale is hard to find. Pancetta is absolutely okay. Okay. Uh, one of the things sometimes that I suggest to people ah. that want to try it, ah, is that- I think your wife is around. Yeah, yeah, my wife is behind the camera, but she probably- Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Hi there. Um, one of the things that I, that I suggest is that if you have somebody like a deli that's, uh, that sells uh, imported prosciutto, very often, uh, they don't know how to sell or market the very end of the prosciutto when the slices are getting too small and too little and bony. Go buy the final end of the prosciutto yeah. and dice very that. Good, the flavor point. is a little different because it, 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 is not, it is not the same kind of cure, but yeah. it's better than using a cheap pancetta imported from, from Canada. Okay. Don't well, hate me for saying that, but yeah, sometimes you get the cheap pancetta. I have to say hi to Holland. There is a guy from Holland. Ciao. And I say hi to Marika. That she said hi. Thank you. From Nikolaisen. Hello. Hello. So hi, everybody. Do your, is your wife a good chef as well? Sorry? Is your wife a good chef as well? Uh, yes. She's a very good cook. She has her staples. But I took over the kitchen since I met her. Uh, 
in, in the eyes of the family, I am the one running the kitchen. Yeah. And now during quarantine, I'm running the, the laundry, so I don't know how that happened. But <laughs> I, I got good at it. Okay, <laughs> so you see, I had to push my, we were talking, so my, my guanciale was going a little too fast. This okay. is how you want your guanciale to, yeah. to be. Okay, before, fantastico. Before you add the garlic. Okay, right? great. Yeah. Okay, so now it goes back on the stove. I'll give you yes, the garlic. Yes, a very good cook. Yes, I know she. Check out the flame. <laughs> and now, in theory, and this is another thing, like if you blanch your vegetables in advance, once uh, the garlic is ready, like in theory, I could put the pasta now. This sauce can be ready in 10 minutes. So should I put okay. the pasta and show sure. you the Go. finish? Go. And we decided. Go with Gemelli. 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 Right on. Gemelli forever. Gemelli forever. Three. Okay. So you are basically cooking your own lunch. Yes, today today you're getting me to do my own lunch. You know, one of the interesting things uh, during uh, this quarantine, we started working on a, a one meal a day regimen. We only cook at dinner. So okay. during the day, I film my recipes, I do my live videos, but we snack, and we do leftovers, we do frittatas, bruschetta, and then in the evening we have- You do the food. real meal, right? Yeah. Cooking time is eight minutes. I will be finishing it into the pot. So six minutes. Okay. So I finish it when it's uh, still a little bit. But how many times a week do you eat pasta? Three, four, mm, like out. usually. Okay, so let me lower this a bit. You always need some hot. Somebody, let's. Ciao Rocco. Ciao, Rocco di Spirit is following us. Ciao Rocco no. di Spirit, how are Ciao, you? Ciao Rocco. Come on. <laughs> you oh. know Rocco was the first, first chef doing the butta la pasta IG Oh, like. grande. Yeah. Grande. So, okay, so look, the garlic is nice and toasted. Yeah. The guanciale is really nice and crispy. Yeah. I am going to turn off the stove now because I don't need to cook my uh, kale for 10 minutes. Yeah. I'm going to put it, mix it, and then I'm going to grate the cheese and add some reserved water from the pasta once the pasta is done. Okay? okay. So let me add this. And you want to kind of like, can you see the pot? Yes, kind of like. No, it would be better, yes. Always better. There you go. See the, yeah, this is perfect. I know it's hard to do cooking and uh, filming by yourself. By your no, 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 way. that is actually not hard. The hard part here is the split screen, just because of the fact <laughs> yeah. I, have, I, I have to be down a little bit. <laughs> I'm keeping the Maybe telephone the very close to my face because I have a mess around me, so. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Smart. Can you hear the sound? Yeah. Let me see. Can we use rapini? Julia, yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. The same with rapini broccoli rob. You need to blanch them. So cut the stalk at the bottom, blanch them for rapini. It takes a little longer, so I would say two to three minutes, and then squeeze them. And then one of the a couple, of, a couple of tips about preserving the, the 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 color and the texture. Cool off in ice water. So if you have uh, enough ice, uh, make a bucket of ice water and pour your greens in it so they will stop cooking right away. To retain the color sometimes, if you have a vegetable that has a, a very nice bright green, something that I do with, uh, especially with, uh, with spinach. The spinach tends to ch change the color a lot when you cook it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A touch of baking soda to the water. Yeah. But that, that, that's really like, you know, the, a presentation trick if you want to keep the color. If I'm cooking for my family, I'm not making it. I'm not no, blanching. but you know, if you cook for our guests, it's nice. You never know, we exactly. We can see the pan. Okay, at one point I will ask you, Gabriele, to move the telephone and to focus on the pan, you know. Yeah, okay, hold on. But maybe when you are going to finish the, the pasta? Well, right now I have, uh, well, maybe it would be interesting if I put a timer for the pasta, right? Yeah, maybe it would be interesting. <laughs> that would help, huh? I'll put it at five. <laughs> you know, it's funny, I, I always uh, undercook my pasta, so I'm not never concerned about overcooking it. Uh, but yeah, the timer is important. Sometimes. Well done, we have a, a, a well done. Uh, before. And you then, were free. Let's talk about, 
you want to talk about recycling more. In this recipe, I have, uh, you know, in the house, I have uh, both pecorino and parmigiano. We make pesto often. Uh, we tend to use parmigiano more than pecorino just because it's more versatile. Yeah. However, pecorino carries a nice punchy flavor. Uh, I'm going to use a mix of it. If you don't have either, you can grate in almost any dry cheese. Just do not grate cheddar in a sauce like this because this won't no. come out nice. No, no, no. Uh, but if you have, let's say, a dry machego, or uh, there are some dry, even sheep, artisanal, you know, US yeah. made cheese. The point has to be a seasoned and dry. A seasoned and dry, seasoned. yes. Um, and if you I notice, don't... I haven't added any salt to my sauce yet. The okay. guanciale is cured and carries salt and pepper because of its cure. And uh, the cheeses are salty. So I am gonna adjust the salt when it's plated. I'm not even adjusting it in the pot. There's nothing worse than over seasoning your pasta, over dressing or over cooking it. So the simplest, the better, the best ingredient in smaller quantity, this is perfect. So black kale, guanciale, garlic, and, uh, and pasta, you know, some cheese on it and, and it's going good. Yeah, because uh, uh, allo, Sebastiano, Sardinia pecorino is the best, strong taste. Really? Uh, grazie. Uh, grazie. Uh, grazie. <laughs> Poi, <laughs> Qui è tanto se si trova in Locatelli. <ride> Ma comunque io sto, io no. sto tornando, a, ca sto tornando no. a casa dopo vent'anni di vita in America, per cui quest'estate mi trasferisco a Firenze di nuovo con tutta la famiglia. Pecorino Sardo ce l'avrò a casa al 100%. Gabriele is moving back to Italy, to Tuscany, this summer. Davvero. Non vedo l'ora, guarda. Vent'anni qui. He's speaking Italian, he doesn't realize, even realize it. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been super, super long. I mean, you know, not super long. I, I grew up in Tuscany. The thing is that I always uh, took for granted the heritage that came with growing up in a certain way. Sure. Surrounded by history, surrounded by culture, by nature, by... And having a pace of life that was a little bit more humane. I got here, I was in love, we got married, bought a house, had kids, and I had my... my you know, my moments of glory, I got my show, I got my books. But it is a devastating lifestyle. Living in America, especially in the biggest cities like Los Angeles and New York, you need to be hyper productive, you need, you need to be hyper motivated. And yeah. there's no Saturday, there's no Sunday, there's no, you know, it's a 24 hour life. Stay of, of, life. You know. But you yeah. know, I think with what happened with the pandemic, totally agree, Carol said, yeah. Uh, you know, I think living in general in big cities, I be, I was been, I've been living for uh, 10 years in Paris and it was uh -huh. quite demanding as well. Not as America, I think. Europe is still a little bit slower in the good right. terms. Sometimes the bad ones, but mostly the good terms. Right. But, you know, I think New York as a, you know, I really dream to go back to New York. Yeah. This. Well, look, I, I always tell everybody, this is an experience that everybody should have. Especially yeah. anybody that, that, that feels productive, that has the energy. Uh, yeah. New York, though, is not a city where you can come to try to make it. You need to come here with only one objective in mind, making it. Yeah. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. It becomes frustrating because it's such a hard city. It is just a hard city. That, that's the truth of it. LA was a little easier just because you do have the space. The weather is always nice. Yeah, California so you, can, easier. you can have a pace of life adjusted to your environment, like yeah. New York City, you know. Oh, it's time. Ringing, time. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> you still have the old ring. No, but, but is, this is a good what thing. What is your, your uh, wake up call? It's yes, a, always. It's like all the times, you know. Start the sauce again. Yeah. Grab a mug and grab some water from the pasta. Oh. Sure. Ah, oh, look at this. For our, for our people, Italians. And people are not nice here. Well, I have to say, as an Italian coming to New York, I really find a lot of kindness. Kindness, but I understand that maybe living there all the time is hard. But it I is, uh, I'm a personal. Uh, I'm so much in love about New York. Always but trying to pass. Don't yourself. <laughs> another mina. So we have another mina. It is very important that you reserve. Uh, this yeah especially because uh, here in america the tendency is anytime that you talk about the pasta that has uh, that carries on uh, a little bit of a creamy connotation that actually means cream it doesn't we're kind of like this is almost like a mantecazione is uh, we're adding the water to dissolve the cheese uh, so the creaminess is uh, 
salty starch water from the pasta so you don't have a variation of ingredient it is consistent but that really helps melt the cheese in your sauce and gives you a little texture and allows the sauce kind of like to get you know when you eat and your ears tingle yeah growing up in all italian family and only their ways is shocking <laughs> Something else that you could add here, in case you're in the mood, is some toasted pine nuts. Uh, you can uh, ground uh, some either almonds or hazelnut. Just toast them in a pan really quick. I wanted to do it for you to show off and then I forgot. Sorry. No, no it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> like your style. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> Julia, she's very nice. I have learned so much, Maddalena. Thank you so much. I'm happy that uh, we're uh, doing something good. And, you know, Maddalena is brava. Maddalena is yeah. good. She knows what she's doing. <laughs> Grazie. Okay. Um, my pasta is still a little bit al dente, but I'll have to keep it into the pot cooking while I grate the cheese. So if you excuse me, I'm just going to the sink, drain it, and come back, okay? Va bene, bye. It's just on the side of the phone, so you'll see me fast. You know, this moment in Italy, mamma, butta la pasta, it's so typical for us. Oh, darling, butta la pasta, throw the pasta in the water. It's such an such a it's like to say you know a tavola uh, everybody is ready at the table it's typical how do we say in, in english a tavola how can we translate that this uh, moment uh, we, we scream we whistle uh girls it's time for dinner, because it's time like for dinner. So yeah. i just have to scream okay so don't bother mixing too much uh, and do not keep the stove too high. Okay, so okay. Uh, we'll grab some cheese. I start with some parmigiano. Va bene. Yes, because you put both, right? Yes. A tiny Wait, bit of for both. the Sardinia and the pecorino, of course, but in the meantime, <laughs> ciao, Marica. Pecorino. Buono. Okay, we're coming over, huh? Vero? Okay. Un mestriella. Un mestriella. Gira un po'. E l'acqua di cottura. Ok, l'acqua di cottura okay. è importante. Cooking water is crucial for uh, determining the creaminess. I would put some toasted bread crumbs, absolutely. That's why absolutely. I mentioned the nuts. Yes. Mm, now I really want to have a very good uh, close up. I love this gesture. So it means a lot to me. Bella lì. Yes, he lives with three girls, so he needs to scream hardly. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> He's a survivor. I live with boys because. Uh, How I many boys do you have? No, I have two. Oh, okay. Right on. And. Uh, here they use panna in Holland, I guess. Yeah, you know, cream is... In Italy, is uh, underestimated. I think in the US, is overestimated. Uh, yes, uh, I, I think that in Italy, panna is used as a, as a real traditional ingredient. If you go to Emilia Romagna and you eat the tortellini or prosciutto, without how could you have them without panna? So there is the sense of panna being an ingredient not yeah. as an expedient uh, the way that it's used here. So yeah. here it's used as an expedient to achieve creaminess. In Italy it's used to they use when you, they want you to taste with a mushroom, uh, with uh, some squash, uh, you know, when it's appropriate. Okay, for you that you missed the beginning, this is amazing pasta, um, kind of gemelli pasta with uh, guanciale, pecorino, San Parmigiano, um, kale. Penne is, panna is very 80s style in Italy, yes. But I think panna can be interesting if you don't use too much. Ah, now is the taste moment. Don't eat everything we're coming over. Ah, buona. So, you know, it is sinful. There's a lot of flavor. There's pork fat. But there's also greens. So you kind of like feel a little less guilty about having a pound of pasta. <laughs> At 12 noon. È buona? Mazzo. Delicioso. Delicious. Very, mm. very good. Looks really delicious. Gabriele. The good thing of a sauce like this is this. Uh, excuse me. I'll chew behind. Mm. This sauce uh, 
makes good leftovers. So if you have leftover pasta of this, just save it in a container and do not microwave your leftover pasta. Please just do me this gigantic favor, don't do that. You get a smaller skillet tomorrow, a drizzle of olive oil, you jump it and you're done and your lunch is ready once because again. We called it uh, pasta saltata. Pasta saltata, yeah. You basically saute that. Yeah. Pasta jumped. Mm -hmm. So yeah. and it's like very nice when it's a little bit crunchy. On oh, the it's top. good. It makes a little crust. Absolutely. Yeah, a little crust yeah. is amazing. That's one well, of the things that here in America doesn't happen often. Everybody reheats their pasta in the microwave. And the microwave is a true killer for pasta because it just makes it soggy. So, okay. you know. Stay I away think from this that. is a very good point because yeah. if you have done too much pasta, you can definitely use another time tomorrow. Oh, always. Or and and if hours. by any chance uh, you don't want to go through it, find like some mozzarella or some soft cheese, uh, some breadcrumbs, mix it together and bake it. That's this. Put an egg in our leftover pasta. I think yeah. it's a great idea. Frittata, pasta frittata is amazing. Yeah, Love I mean, it. if you wanted to add more cheese to this, maybe some mozzarella, dice and bake it with some breadcrumbs and parmesan on top. Mamma che pame. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I'm still eating and I'm still salivating as I come up with the ideas. But, but, but this is the beauty of, of the way that I run my kitchen. I, I am attached to the ingredients, but not necessarily in terms of quantities and percentages. I, I like to work with what I have. I am a farmer at heart, even if I ended up, you know, having a, a show about cooking. It is, uh, it is about the stories. It is about really like domestic economy. It's about creating an environment to pass on certain traditions sure. to my kids in a way that it has to be a little bit more modern. You know, I, I grew up in Florence where heritage food is a, such a, a big, slow food, complicated world. You need to stick to, to certain kind of, and it's absolutely fine, but it's becoming increasingly difficult as time progresses uh, to maintain this tradition and pass it along to generations that cannot relate to the way that, let's say, the farm was uh, operating 60 years ago or 40 years ago when I was born. They never saw it. So it's really impossible to push a certain kind of stories uh, without context. So I'm trying to use these new mediums to keep those old stories alive, but also to make them interesting so we can make sure that we can kind of like keep them alive and pass them along. That, that is what I care for the most part. Well, actually it's exactly the goal of La Cucina Italiana. Protect the tradition. Can and I show you something? Be flexible enough to change and adapt to our daily life. So you know. we're in my kitchen. I'm going to give you a little tour. Oh, I don't keep books you. in the kitchen, but look what I have here. Ah, bravo. Bravo, grazie. Thank you so much. All of it. And because they came out when I was already in the United States, this is my mother that bought everyone at the newsstand For you. and shipped it to me every time that they came out. Sometimes sure. I went back. Sometimes I went back uh, home and I found like four or five waiting for me. Uh, other times uh, I just uh, received a package from my mom with a, with a new issue. And this is, this is the rest of the, this is only food. Well done. Oh, mamma mia. <laughs> That's an office, a food office. <laughs> yeah, there's 1700 titles just, just here. It's, wow. it's, it's stupid because I, I don't read them. That's the other thing. I, 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 I find inspiration in, in, in the love that other people put in the work that they do. So very often when I buy a cookbook, to me it's about the preface of the recipe and the picture. I rarely read and make a list of the ingredients. Uh, so I don't fall in the mistake of ending up copying somebody's recipe. But I also like the challenge of creating something just because I got inspired by somebody else. So that to me, it, it is very important. It's a part of a the developing process for my recipes. Let me show you the cover of the Italian edition of La Cucina Italiana in this moment. Ah, eh, ammazza, gnamme. Mille foglie, gnamme. Eh, mille foglie è, è la mia torta preferita. And then I show you the one that is in the, in the Italy store. Risotto. Wonderful. So the risotto, you know, I'm, I'm from Milan, so for eh. me risotto is a kind of religion. Wonderful, so, absolutely wonderful. Gabriele, you were great. Thank you, the Tuscan Gun. Oh, Very please. Nice. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, don't forget to share the file and invite your friends uh, to the next one. If you want to join, well, it'll probably be late for you. Yeah, it's going to be midnight. We're going to go live with my wife this, uh, this Wednesday.
we're awesome. actually gonna make a bruschetta episode, kind of like cleaning up the fridge and we're making cocktails and bruschettas and it's yeah, we're having a lot of fun. It's your hair of your daughter that is screaming. It's your hair? It's your, it's, it's no, your no, <laughs> no, it's my, it's, it's my wife giving herself a manicure. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao, wife. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. You froze for a moment. You froze for a moment. Oh, here you are. You're back. So yeah, look. Bellissima. I'm really starving. What time again you live with your wife tonight? Uh, it's Wednesday, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night at what yeah, time? Yeah, it's six, uh, six New York time. Six okay, uh, Eastern six time. New York time. Yeah. Okay. But we, we, you so know, we reposted the after on Facebook and everything. So, yeah. you know, we're always there. I would love to see you guys in live, but if I can't, because it's going to be a little late, I will going to... Yeah, don't worry. On, on no, no, no. We, yeah. we're, moving, we're moving to Italy, so we'll be on the same time zone soon. Don't worry. We'll be fine. I, I'll wait for you guys. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thanks for having me. Bye, everybody. Ciao, ciao. Have a wonderful lunch. Be well. Ciao, ciao. Well, Gabriele is an amazing guy, isn't he? It's really nice and really generous. And uh, I, I would like to say, as all Italians, is not true. But many of my, in my country are so, so nice as he is. And uh, I think it was fun. I hope you had fun and uh, we learned something. And uh, definitely now we are starving because uh, that pasta looks delicious. So um, I'm going to be back soon, maybe a couple of days at worst. And uh, in the meantime, take care of yourself. And thank you so much for being here and all the nice questions. And uh, what are your books called? Uh, actually, the books that uh, Gabriele was showing, they were uh, made and published by La Cucina Italiana. Uh, and we do a lot of books in Italy. Uh, we never done actually a book in America, but maybe, you know, maybe soon. Grazie. Ciao.